date. Sticking now with IZMAID, a new study finds the same chemicals used for farming are being found in pregnant women. IZMAID's Cody Fisher tonight speaking with the very doctor who spearheaded that study and with a farmer about how they use that chemical. Behind me is one of the millions of acres of soybeans that are planted in Indiana every single year. The researcher I'm speaking with tells me that a specific weed killer that's used on soybeans like these is what they found in the bodies of pregnant women. Phil Ramsey has been a farmer all his life. He has experience in using a sprayer like this one to kill weeds in his fields. One of the chemicals he uses is called dicamba, which is the chemical doctors found in pregnant women. He says there are very strict rules on how and when farmers can use it. Most of us follow it very closely. Um, I, I mean, we don't want to harm our neighbors. We don't want to harm our family. Uh, we're out here to provide a, a safe food supply for everybody. Dr. David Haas is the person spearheading the research into dicamba at IU Medical School. Their research compared two groups of pregnant moms. The first group was tested for their herbicide between 2010 to 2012. The second group was tested between 2020 to 2022. It was just under 30 percent in the original cohort before dicamba's use started to skyrocket and now it's 70 percent. Is that concerning at all for you when you found those numbers? It's concerning in the fact that there is bigger exposure. Now, we don't know what that exposure means yet. Dr. Haas is worried the herbicide could be causing bad birth outcomes. Preterm birth, preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, and stillbirth. Those are the main ones that we're looking at. The location of where these moms live is also concerning for the researchers. They're urban. They're, they're not living out on farms where you would expect the exposures to be going up. Which is why researchers are also trying to figure out how it's getting into the bodies of pregnant women to begin with. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has done studies and shown that the food residue for dicamba is really not that much. And so it must be coming from either dust that's floating around or our water sources. The company who makes dicamba attacked the study and people working on the study in a statement saying, the dicamba levels reported in this publication are 0.02% of the safety limit that experts at the U.S. EPA established to protect human health. These dicamba levels are not remotely close to any levels of concern and, if anything, just reaffirm there is no health risk. It should be noted that the co-author, Mr. Binbrook, has significant credibility issues and clear monetary motivations. Mr. Binbrook, who is not a scientist or medical expert, has been a highly paid witness against our company in the U.S. Roundup litigation for years. Ramsey says the findings of the study are puzzling to him because he can't see a way for the chemical to make it into people's bodies. It's always concerning when um, you know they kind of point the finger to, uh, towards us because we're we're doing everything we can to keep from that possibly happening, and there's other uh, there's other sources for that particular product. Uh, it's used in. Um, uh, spraying lawns. Dr. Haas suggested one possible solution would be to stop using the chemicals, which would be concerning for Ramsey. If they take one away from us, then what would possibly be the next one? Or the next one, and we don't have very many of these particular types of chemicals to help us kill the tough weeds that are already up and growing. The researcher I spoke with tells me he wants to use this study as a springboard for further research to determine if the chemical they found in pregnant women is doing any damage to their babies. Reporting in Shelbyville, Cody Fisher, ITMate, Wish TV, wishtv.com, and follow us on Facebook for updates.